This is Tom Fox. I'm the Compliance Evangelist, and I'd like to welcome you to the November series of One Month to a More Effective Compliance Program series that I'm running in 2017. This month, we're going to take a look at one month of 360 degrees of communication in compliance. This month's sponsor is Dun & Bradstreet. The only thing that is constant right now in the regulatory environment is change. Supply chain leaders and compliance professionals alike continue to struggle with how to best adequately identify, screen, and gain visibility into ownership structures of third parties and or customers so that they understand exactly who they are doing business with. Companies can knowingly finance goods that are potentially obtained illegally or sold on the black market. Procurement teams that are unaware of third-party activities and have antiquated systems, they put their company at risk. Without proper visibility, these teams could unknowingly be funding terrorism or even engaging in human trafficking. In-depth research is needed to identify ultimate beneficial owners and third-party risks. No business ties to corrupt practices such as human trafficking or money laundering is going to self-report, so companies must take this work on themselves and obtain third-party data needed to determine risk, mitigate exposure, and protect their brand and comply with regulations. Dun & Bradstreet offers an end-to-end comprehensive solution to help organizations tackle this exact complexity. Leverage Dun & Bradstreet's complete due diligence reporting to know your vendor and your third-party partners. Do not expose yourself to undue risk. Contact Dun & Bradstreet today to learn more about vendor onboarding, supply risk management, and comprehensive compliance check. This month I'm going to tackle the concept of 360 degrees of communication and compliance. We're going to take a look at it from a variety of ways and mechanisms. We're going to consider the chief compliance officer and its ro- his or her role in communications. We're going to take a look at how you can facilitate a two-way conversation of communications while sitting in the CCO suite. We're going to consider some of the leadership and other components of a CCO's role and how they will help you have a more robust and indeed holistic approach to compliance. We're going to consider the bottom-up approach to communications by utilizing communications techniques for your employees, third parties, contractors, and those that may come into contractual relationship with your company through the supply chain. We're going to consider 360 degrees of communications through operationalization of compliance and culture. It's going to be a very interesting month. I think as a CCO, you will learn quite a bit. And at the end of the month, you will not only have information which will allow you to be a more well-rounded CCO, but bring a much more holistic approach to your compliance function. My year-long series of one month to a more effective compliance program and the November edition of one month of 360 degrees of communication and compliance are a part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Day 14, Twitter and 360 degrees of communication in compliance. One of the ways that a CCO and compliance practitioner can better use 360 degrees of communication is through Twitter. Employees with a diverse Twitter network, one that exposes them to ideas and to people they don't already know, tend to generate better ideas. In an article entitled How Twitter Users Can Generate Better Ideas, the authors posited three findings. Number one, employees who used Twitter had better ideas than those who did not. Two, there was a link between the amount of diversity in employees' Twitter networks and the quality of their ideas. And number three, Twitter users who combined idea scouting and idea connecting are the most innovative. I do not think the first point is too controversial or even insightful, as it simply confirms that persons who tend to have greater curiosity tend to be more innovative. The logic is straightforward. Good ideas emerge when new information is received new information received is shared with that what a person already knows. In today's digitally connected world, the amount of information is almost significant in any area. 
Yet by using Twitter, the potential for accessing a divergent set of ideas is greater. The key concepts for the compliance practitioners are the roles of the idea scout and the idea connector. An idea scout is an employee who looks outside the organization to bring in new ideas, and an idea connector is someone who can assimilate the external ideas, find the opportunities within the organization to implement these new concepts. It is the ability to identify, assimilate, and exploit new compliance ideas which makes this concept so powerful. However, to improve your compliance innovation, you need to maintain a diverse network while also developing your assimilation and exploitation skills. For the compliance practitioner, Twitter can be described as a gateway to the solution options and a way to obtain different perspectives and to challenge one's current thinking. Interestingly, it is not the number of people you follow on Twitter that matters. It's the diversity within your network. Diversity of an employee's Twitter network is conductive to innovation. An idea scout will identify external ideas from experts and resources on Twitter. Clearly, the compliance practitioner can take advantage of experts with, <clears throat> within the compliance field. But there is perhaps an equally rich resource of innovation from outside this arena. Even with the modern social media tools, good leadership techniques that are, are to listen through the breadcrumb approach of finding innovation leaders and thought provokers. It is entailed lis- listening to colleagues about and industry leaders who are on Twitter <clears throat> about what they're tweeting, who they are following, and replying to on the platform, and who is being re- retweeted often. Equally important to the idea scout is the idea connector, who puts the disparate strand from tweets together. From the compliance function, This will be someone who identifies the compliance best practices or other information from Twitter ideas that you can put together and direct the information to the relevant company stakeholders. Such a person can curate Twitter ideas and matches them with company resources which are needed to implement them. There are a variety of ways the Idea Connector can use Twitter. One is to sift through your Twitter feed and look for trends and relationships between topics. You can bring value when you stamp your own analysis and interpretation upon it. Another method is to focus on the analytics and one user, <clears throat> one user filtered specific subsets of the topic for different stakeholders at their company. Another method is to create social media dashboards or company blogs based on, on insight received through Twitter. Interestingly, one of the key requirements for su- successfully mining Twitter was in finding ways to share content since many employees, especially baby boomers, don't use the platform themselves. Conversely, by mining information from Twitter and presenting it, this can allow those technologically challenged older employees to ascertain how they can target millennials. Always an important issue in compliance. But as much as these concepts can move a CCO or compliance practitioner to innovation in a compliance program, it can also foster additional communications through following your own employees. It is well known that Twitter can facilitate greater communication to and from company employees, the compliance base, and the customer base. However, the use of Twitter enables the same type of innovation because it's different than email and in the form of information sources that it enables continuous engagement. Twitter was created to allow people to connect with one another and to communicate about their activities. However, the marketing potential was immediately seen and used by many companies. Now a deeper understanding of its use and benefit have developed. For the compliance practitioner, one thing you want to consider is to line your Twitter and greater social media strategy with your compliance strategy. Match your Twitter strategy to your compliance strategy. Think about it, assess it, and move it forward. Twitter can be a powerful tool for the compliance practitioner. It is only one of the tools that you can work with both on an inbound way for you to obtain information and insight in an outbound manner as well, where you are able to communicate with your compliance customer base, i.e. your employees. You should work to incorporate one or more of these techniques to help you burn compliance into the DNA and fabric of your organization through the operationalization of compliance. So what are today's three key takeaways? Well, let's start with the basics that Twitter is a very powerful tool for the compliance practitioner. It allows a two-way 
communication inbound and outbound. It's something that allows a 360-degree view beyond this as well. Two, data mine Twitter for not only best practices, but to see what the regulators may be saying. Amazingly enough, the SEC, the Department of Justice, and many other government agencies now are on Twitter, and they're communicating daily, multiple times a day. Use this information as it's solid information going forward. You don't have to simply read the tea leaves. And finally, number three, curiosity may have killed a cat, but it makes for a far better and more effective compliance practitioner. If you're curious, if you want to continually learn, compliance is the place for you, and Twitter can help facilitate all of that. I hope you have enjoyed day 14, and you will join me tomorrow for day 15 of one month to 360 degrees of communication and compliance. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode of One Month to 360 Days of Communication and Compliance. If you have listened to this podcast on iTunes, I would greatly appreciate it if you would rate our podcast as it would help in our rankings and also help get the word out about the only daily compliance podcast involving the nuts and bolts of compliance. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. Finally, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this month, Dun & Bradstreet. I hope you will join me tomorrow for another episode. The podcast series in November, one month to 360 degrees of communication is a part of the Compliance Podcast Network.